Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Sarah Aziza Nurul Aishi, and in this video, I'm going to read my resume about Chapter 5, Psychoanalysis. Chapter 5, Psychoanalysis. Freudian Psychoanalysis. Segment Freud argues that the creation of civilization has resulted in the repression of basic human instincts. He first divides the psyche into two parts, the conscious and the unconscious. The conscious is the part that relates to the external world, by the, while the unconscious is the site of instinctual drives and repressed wishes. Freud, final, final model of the psyche, introduces three new terms, the ego, the superego, and the I. The I is the most primitive part of our being. It is the part of our nature which is impersonal and so to speak subject to natural law. The ego develops out of the ID. The ego cannot exist in the individual from the start. The ego has to be developed. The super ego begins as the internalization or introjection of the authority of the child's parents, especially of the father. Although the superego is in many ways the voice of culture, it remains in alliance with the eye. There are two particular things to note about the village model of the psyche. First, we are born with an eye, while the ego develops through contact with culture which in turn produce the superego. In other words, our nature is governed by culture. Human nature is not something innate and unchangeable. It is something at least in part introduced from outside. Culture is always historical and variable. It is itself always open to change. Second, and perhaps much more fundamental to psychoanalysis, the psyche is envisaged as a site of perpetual conflict. The most fundamental conflict is between the I and the ego. The I wants desires satisfied regardless of the claims of culture, while the ego sometimes in loose alliance with the superego is obliged to meet the claims and conventions of society. This conflict is sometimes portrayed as a struggle between the pleasure principle and the reality principle. Dreams, according to Freud, are always a compromise structure. That is a compromise between wishes emanating from the idea and censorship enacted by the ego. Dreams move between two levels. First, the latent dream thoughts are unconscious and the manifest content what the dreamer remembers dreaming. Dream anal analysis attempts to decode the manifest content in order to discover the real meaning of the dream. This first aspect of displacement operates along chains of association in which what is in the manifest content alludes to something in the latent dream thoughts. The second mechanism of displacement changes the focus of the dream. What appears in the manifest content is differently centered from the dream thoughts. Its content has different elements at its central point. The third aspect of the dream work operative in the first two is symbolization. The translation of dream thoughts into a primitive mode is expression similar to picture writing, in which the Latin dream thoughts are dramatized and illustrated. The dream work's final process is secondary revision. This is the narrative placed by the dreamer on the dream symbolism. It takes two forms. First, it is the verbal account of the dream, the translation of symbols into language and narrative. We fill in gaps and introduce connections and in doing so, are often guilty of gross misunderstandings. Second, and more importantly, 
Secondary revision is the final policing and channeling strategy of the ego, making meaning and coherence in an act of unconscious censorship. There are at least two ways in which Freudian psychoanalysis can be used as a method to analyze text. The first approach is author-centered, treating the text as the equivalent to an author's dream, the surface of a text is regarded as the manifest content, while the Latin content is the author's hidden desires. Texts are read in this way to discover an author's fantasies. These are seen as the real meaning of the text. The second approach is reader-centered and derives from the secondary aspect of the author-centered approach. This approach is concerned with the how text allow readers to symbolically play out desires and fantasies in the text they read. In this way, the text works like a subheated dream. Lacanian psychoanalysis. Jacques Lacan relates through it using the theoretical methodology developed by structuralism. According to Lacan, we are born into a condition of lack and subsequently spend the rest of our lives trying to overcome this condition. Lack, lack is experienced in different ways and as different things, but it is always a non-representable expression of the fundamental condition of being human. Lacan argues that we make a journey through three determining stages of development. The first is the mirror stage, the second is the fourth the game, and the third is the Oedipus complex. Our lives begin in the realm that can cause the real. In the realm of the real, our union with the mother, or who is playing the symbolic role, is experienced as perfect and complete. As Latin points out, we are all born prematurely. It takes time to be able to control and co coordinate our movements. The symbolic is an intersubjective network of meanings, which is, exists as a structure we must enter. As such, it is very similar to the way in which culture is understood in post-Marxist cultural studies. Cine psychoanalysis, Laura Mulvey's is a visual pleasure and narrative cinema, is perhaps the classic statement on popular film from the perspective of feminist psychoanalysis. The inscription of the image of woman in this system is twofold. First, she is the object of male desire, and second, she is the signifier of the threat of castration. There are two pleasures that must be destroyed. First, there is scopophilia, the pleasure of looking popular cinema promotes and satisfies a second pleasure, developing scopophilia in its narcissistic aspect. Popular cinema is structured around two moments, moments of narrative and moments of spectacle. The first is associated with the active male, the second with the passive female, to salvage, pleasure, and escape an unpleasurable reenactment of the original castration complex. The male unconscious can take two routes to safety. The first means to escape
that's all from the resume about chapter 5 psychoanalysis from me. Thank you for watching.